Preclinical General Dentistry 2, Class 2 Amalgam. This instructional video is a visual supplement to the material covered in the didactic and laboratory courses. To access tooth number 18, the patient is seated in a semi-supine position with the mandibular occlusal plane parallel to the floor. In this position, a fulcrum is established. The burr should be placed perpendicular to the occlusal plane of tooth number 18. The initial cut is placed in the central pit. Light circular movements are used to create the initial cut. The ideal depth is measured at 1.5 millimeters from the shallowest point. Continue to prepare the class one portion, maintaining a flat pulpal floor. Marked in blue is the contact area for tooth number 18. The class one portion is centered However, the box will be centered around the existing proximal contact. Extend the preparation to include the reverse S-curve and thin the marginal ridge. Notice the buccolingual width for the box is centered around the contact point. Continue to thin the marginal ridge as shown. The thin marginal ridge is maintained in order to provide protection for the adjacent tooth surface. The position of the class 1 is centered from a buccolingual direction. The position of the box is centered at the proximal contact. The lingual proximal cavo surface will include the central fissure from an occlusal view. At this point, the axial wall and gingival floor are prepared. The box is prepared by apically moving the burr in controlled buccolingual movements. The proximal cavo surfaces will have unsupported enamel. The enamel hatchet is used in an apical direction to finish the enamel cavo surface margins of the box. The tine of the explorer should freely pass the proximal box cavo surface margins. The preparation is now ready for restoration. The amalgam is placed in the deepest portion of the box first. Force is used with a small amalgam condenser in an apical, buccal, and lingual direction. The amalgam is also condensed towards the matrix band to ensure proper contact. Overpack the preparation with 1 to 2 millimeters of amalgam. A burnisher is used to seal the cavo surface margins. An explorer is used to clear the amalgam from the matrix band. Provide support to the band when removing the Toffelmeyer retainer. Remove the wedge gently. Tease the band with forces applied towards the adjacent tooth. Place the blade of the carver at a 45 degree angle towards the central fissure. Each cusp is carved utilizing the uncut portion of the tooth as a guide. Do not allow the tip of the carver to cross over the central fissure line while carving. This will cause an error in anatomical form. Gently floss, placing the force against the adjacent tooth. Do not bring the floss back up through the contact. The final restoration should reproduce proper anatomical form. When working on the maxillary arch, the dentist position is at 11 o'clock for a right-handed operator. The patient is seated in a supine position. The maxillary arch plane is perpendicular to the floor. Indirect vision is utilized. The DOL preparation will not cross the oblique ridge. Prepare the class one portion and thin the marginal ridge before cutting the box. The lingual box includes the lingual fissure 
and is prepared from the lingual approach with the dentist switching to the 9 o'clock position. The proximal box is prepared the same way as tooth number 18. Now the preparation is ready for restoration. The amalgam placement follows the same principles as previously shown.